Cool, okay. Um, if first of all, you could just give me your name and your job title, and we'll just check the sound levels are all okay on the yeah. microphone. My name's Gary Rose, and I'm a company director. That's great, thank you. So um, we'll get on to the apprentices in a moment, but first of all, just give us a, a gist of what it is that your company does. Uh, the company's called Planet Leasing. We're based in Westcliff on sea We've been trading uh, in March, will be four years. Uh, we started in 2007, just me and my business partner, Darren, and um, although we're in a, uh, we don't call it a, um, a recession, we call it an economic downturn, although we're, we're presently in one, our business fortunately is one of the few that's managed to not only survive but, but grow. Um, we've gone from um, two of us to six of us and we've recently taken on two new apprentices. Now, where, where did the idea for the apprentices come from? Was it literally you, you got to a stage where you needed some help and you needed a way to find that? Absolutely, yeah. We found that um, we, we were becoming, we're, we're basically in, in sales and to have to administer a sale, um, you end up becoming an expensive administrator. So we figured that if we could get someone to give us some sales support, then it would mean we could get on doing what we're good at, which is the selling. Um, at, from an administrative point of view as well, the, the two girls that do our administration, Janine and uh, Elaine, they also needed some support as well. So we figured maybe we should uh, get both departments covered by using the current apprenticeship scheme. How did we know about it? Um, we, we're quite into networking and we sort of come across various people you know, on our journeys, uh, Beju Solanke being one of them. Um, Crown College, we bumped into someone from the local council, Carbon Trust, and it became apparent to us that there there is a scheme available for an apprentice. For an apprentice, we didn't know too much about it at the time. We looked into it, and it seemed as if uh, it would be foolish not to explore that avenue, which we did. Um, we spoke to the local council to see how it was funded and uh, depending on how, through which council you fund, currently South End Council you, you have to pay your apprentice £110 a week but they actually give you a £55 rebate. So in total the apprentice ends up costing £55 which is you know, great value for money. Um, our intention wasn't to waste our time training an apprentice for them to leave after 12 months and us just have like well like cheap labor we actually wanted to train that person up so they become you know, an important part in our operation and after 12 months hopefully we couldn't afford to let them go so is it a case of because obviously yes they were on this uh, <laughs> monthly fee if you like well rather than rather than the salary but is it because of the help they've given you you would get to the the point after 12 months where you, you could take them on as yeah. full-time staff because yeah. of the improvements that have been made. Yeah. Well, we could take them on as full-time staff anyway now. Uh, financially, we could manage that. Um, but, you know, you always like to watch your costs as a business. The two guys, I mean, Elliot, he was actually studying for 4A levels at um, Belfair's. I think he was doing double double science or double maths. And a really intelligent guy, very, very IT savvy. Unlike me, I'm 42 years old. I wasn't necessarily brought up with computers, although now I understand you can't really get on in business without having the knowledge of finding your way around a computer. But Elliot's come on board and he's taken over some of the stuff that my co-director Darren Nash used to deal with, i.e. Um, designing flyers, email flyers, designing leaflets, etc., etc. And Elliot's dad, he actually owns a photographic shop in Rayleigh High Street. So when it comes to computers and images and airbrushing, Elliot's the man and totally and utterly invaluable to us, even at such an early stage. Evie Rogers, um, she's actually the niece of um, Janine, who works for us. She does, she's our operations and logistics manager. So Evie's come in, so there are people that we knew anyway. She's come in and she's made the girl, you know, my administration staff, she's made them, just taken the pressure off, you know, they're not sort of running around like headless chickens now. Evie's taken a certain amount of workload off of them which enables them to do what they're really being paid to do more efficiently and feel happier at the end of the day. You know, they're not leaving their desk in a mess, it's everything's done, they've achieved everything on their list. So I, I would basically, um, purpose of me coming here today really is to let other businesses know that there is an apprenticeship scheme out there. Some people don't know about it. I was at a meeting on Friday last week and I met a lady who runs a magazine called The Oracle. She's always chasing her towel, very, very busy. 
she spends half an hour every day in the queue at the bank. And I suggested that she should look at an apprentice to help her in her business, free up a bit of her time so she can get on selling advertising space. Um, I introduced her to a lady called Diane from Crown College because as part of the apprenticeship scheme you have to be on a, an MVQ type educational program so you work in conjunction with the college and with the local council the council provide the money and the college provide the course the, uh, the apprentice is constantly assessed uh, maybe every other week someone from the college will come in and assess their progress uh, and ask them to demonstrate that they're doing certain things in the workplace that are part of their, their course but it's not only about telling people about the scheme and how it exists and the financial support, but also the benefits you can get about with getting the right apprentice. I mean, I infuse over it because I think I've just found two of the right people first time round. But it can take more than more than one attempt to find the right person. But the, the, I mean, the, the fact is there that obviously you, you, as you say, you've been infusing about it. You get the help. They get the experience, they get some pay as well. It's, it's a yeah. win-win situation, so it's, yeah. it's pretty much a no-brainer. I was just going to say it's a no-brainer. Yeah. The technical term's a no-brainer, <laughs> absolutely. Um, Eli Elliot's father, who I, who I actually know personally, he's a, he's a neighbour of mine, he said although Elliot is an intelligent guy and you know he, he could probably achieve good grades at A-level, he just doesn't want to carry on studying. That doesn't make him wrong. I mean, if he was my son, when, he, when Elliot came for his interview, I said, are you sure you want to give up four A-levels to come and work and start a career at Planet Leasing? Uh, he said, yeah, I just want to get involved with a, with a job where I'm earning money, learning a trade, hopefully can take it further at a later date. So he made that move, a brave move at that. Um, Evie, she, I believe she was actually on an apprenticeship scheme at another company in Basildon, but it just wasn't for her. She, she just, I think the, the, the commute, because she didn't drive to get to where she needed to go in Basildon, it was um, a commute on a bus and then a walk across a dark field in the morning. Um, and I don't think that her position was necessarily appreciated. Where, where, she, where she works now, we're, we're on the London Road, 645 London Road. Um, she literally lives a five minute walk so it's on her doorstep but as a consequence of us taking on new staff we're now having to look for alternative premises as our business grows which we're doing at the moment and I believe that the new premises that we're we're hopefully going to sign on the dotted line tomorrow um, are actually near, even nearer at the top of where she lives so there's no excuse for her being late for work <laughs> Just finally, as you grow, as, as you mentioned there, and as uh, Elliot and Evie become actual full-time members of, of your staff, yes. would you consider going back to the apprentice scheme and taking on more apprentices? I think we'd probably take on more apprentices before they've even finished their scheme, depending on whether there's a position. We're, we're actually looking to get get involved in um, sort of telesales. We've never ever done telesales marketing, and we're aware that, although it can be quite laborious, um, sometimes ineffective it, it, it can work so we, we might consider taking on someone to to cover that part of the business you know telesales marketing and i think there's a course that's kind of related to that as well um and that will probably be something that we'll be able to do when we move into our new premises because we're we'll have at least three room for three extra desks which we'd obviously like to fill cool okay feel like you've uh, covered everything in that yeah yeah very much so lovely